Hello and welcome everyone to my channel Code with Ease. Today we are going to discuss about a very popular string conceptual question which is called how to print the subsequences of a string or a power set of a string. This is a very good application of the recursion algorithm. Before we begin, let's understand first of all what is a subsequence. Subsequence is basically a sequence of a given string in which some character is deleted but the order is preserved. So as we have taken this example, let's say there is the string called ABC. And what are the possible subsequences are these A, C, A, B, B, C. So as we can see, the order of the characters is preserved, whereas some character is deleted from it. Like in case of A, B, as we can see, C is deleted. In case of A, C, B is deleted. Or even A, C, B, these are single characters are also the subsequences in which two characters are deleted. So the purpose of today's session is given any string, we have to find out what are the subsequences, all the possible subsequences of that string and then print it off. So, one more thing to note is why do I even call this a conceptual question because in many cases you may not be really asked to print all the subsequences but out of the given subsequences of a string there might be different flavors of the questions. So, if we know how to generate subsequences then based on that we can try to so based on the concept that we derive from this we can try to solve other questions as well that is why it is like the foundation uh, or a very conceptual question and, and second thing is it is a good application of the recursion algorithm as well. So, for those of you who want to understand intermediate uh, questions related to recursion, this question could be a good starting point for those of you who have already completed the basic questions related to recursion. So now with that, let's uh, try to understand what will be the approach for this. There are many different ways of solving this when we are applying recursion to this. The approach today we are going to talk of is called the pick and don't pick concept. So I will draw the recursion tree for this, how it works. So in this we will have two types of strings, one we will consider as the processed string and another we will consider as the unprocessed string. How will the method signature look like? It can be something like print sub sequences, we will have the string s which is the original string which is passed on to us and we will take another parameter which will be called the unprocessed string and then we are going to see how are we going to make the recursive calls to this while manipulating the string process string and the unprocessed string. But before we go into that, let's understand it via a recursion tree how it works. So let's say this is the original string that we have. Let us consider as the process this let us consider this as the process string. And let's have an, an another uh, string which is the unprocessed string which is initially empty. So this one we can consider as initially empty. Now in this we are going to do two recursive calls. One we can consider this as the LHS and this one we can consider as the RHS. So how we are going to do this is we are going to divide it anyway in LHS and RHS. So every part of it, it will be divided again into two parts. One will be the unprocessed string and this will be anyway the processed string. So let's say I pick up A. So A is picked up and it is put into the initially which is empty string. And if A is picked up, which is the first character, we are left with B and C only. This is this is like the two recursive calls that we are doing. In one call, we are putting A into the unprocessed string, which means we are which means we are picking a character. And in another recursive call, we are not picking A and we are just keeping B C as is. Again, we will divide this into LHS and RHS. So now we have unprocessed string containing A. Again, we will pick a character, means we will pick B from here. So it will be A and B. Or we will not pick B, so we will keep it as only C. So this is again unprocessed, this is processed. Same thing will happen on the RHS. So, so, in this we have already picked a character but on this other side we are not going to pick a character. So, in this case A will remain as is and it will be C. Again this will be divided into two parts. So, A, B is already there, we pick C. So, we pick A, B and C. And since we already picked C, now it is again an empty string on which we will denote it by this. Now, if we have already picked up C here on the RHS, we are not going to pick it up. So, A and B will remain as is and C we are anyway not picking up. So, it will be an empty string. Then on this side, it will be A and C. We have picked up C and we have not picked C. So, it will be A only and of course an empty string at the end. So, now that we have completed the LHS part kind of because um, now how do we know we have completed LHS part, part because there is going to be a base condition as we know in case of recursive calls. So, in our case, the base condition is going to be if the process string is going to be empty at any given point, means this part. If the process string becomes empty, obviously we do not have anything else to pick up. What do we pick up? 
from an empty string there is nothing so that is going to be our terminating condition or the base condition so whenever we reach that condition we are going to return the unprocessed string whatever we have got so far so in this case one unprocessed string is this so this is one this is one unprocessed string another unprocessed string could be a b a c and a so so far we have got four unprocessed strings or four subsequences from this given string a b c so now this is wrapping up the lhs part now we'll do the same exercise on the rhs part so in this case what initially what we did is in the empty string we had taken a but in the rhs we are not going to pick a so empty string will remain as is and it will be only bc again into two parts in this case now we'll pick b so b goes in here and c remains and otherwise we don't pick b so it will be an empty string and c remains again this is divided in two parts so b is already there as the unprocessed string we pick c into it or we don't pick c into it so it will be like this and in the right hand side it is anyway going to be empty strings so now this will divide it into two parts so in the empty string either we'll pick c so it will be like this and an empty string or we will not pick c so empty string the unprocessed string will remain as is and this will become an empty string so now that we see again in the process string that is on the right hand side we have got all the empty strings so these are the possible subsequences b c b c and also another simple empty string which is anyway of no use but it is just generated so what are the subsequences now we got there were seven subsequences from here so here also we got seven one two three four five six seven this one we can ignore because this is just an empty string so this is how using a recursive tree we have understood how the subsequences are getting generated by using this concept of pick and don't not pick and the exact same and the code implementation of that we are anyway going to see that in a while so this is the approach for uh, generating the subsequences of a string uh, and this is the base case like we discussed so this is like uh, just to print the subsequences there can be another question like instead of printing the subsequences you might want to store it in some data structure like a list or a set or something and then return the size of that Th that that question is more like how many subsequences are there like a return account of it instead of printing it so that is another flavor of the question which uh, also we can discuss so with that now let's see how do we write the code for this okay so now we are going to start with the code changes for this so we are going to do two implementations first of all we are going to print the subsequences of the given string so this is the string that i have taken abc so first of all we are going to see how can we print the subsequences using recursion and then we are going to see instead of printing the subsequences we are going to store that in uh, in an array list and then later on print the count uh, the size of the list uh, so that we can understand how many subsequences have been generated so let's start with this so as we saw in the recursion tree that we just discussed on the whiteboard we are dividing this into two parts the given string and then we are first of all taking like the normal input whatever the string is and we are also passing in another parameter which is the unprocessed string and this is initially going to be empty second thing is we are dividing it in two parts like the lhs and the rhs so we are going to do two calls two function calls to this so in this i am also going to pass in the uh, empty string we'll come to the code for the base case first of all let's focus on the main body of this so at first the input string that the, that is the process string that we have to do input dot substring and then one means we are omitting the first character out of it like we were seeing so if it is abc we were taking bc only if it is bc then we will take c only and in the unprocessed string which is initially going to be empty into that we are going to put either we are going to put the character or we are not going to put the character that is what we learned right so if you have to pick the first character out of it what we have to do is input dot char at of zero that is going to be the first character always so with that we are going to append the current unprocessed string that that we have so this is the first lhs in which we are picking the character input dot char at and putting it inside the unprocessed string in the second line i mean in this is the lhs if we consider in the rhs we are going to do just the unprocessed we are going to keep it as is so in the first line we have picked the character in the second line we have not picked the character and input dot substring as i said in whatever be the case in both lhs and rhs we were omitting the first character hence we are starting it from 
the one th index that is why we are putting substring one uh, if you want to know more about string methods and uh, different types and implementations of that you can let me know in the comments below i can have another video on that as well to describe all the string methods and the usages okay so back to this question now coming back to the base case so lhs rhs part is done these are the two lines which are going to i mean these are the two recursive calls which are going to happen one after another so if you can remember from the previous recursion tree that we did we told that what is the terminating condition for this is when the processed string that is the input the original string is finally going to be empty if at all it is empty means we have reached our base case so we will do this check whether this input is empty or not if it is empty, we will have to print out whatever we have uh, accumulated in this unprocessed string. So, we are going to just print it out, whatever we have it in the unprocessed string. And we will return. We are just doing uh, only return because it is a void data type. We do not have to return anything. Return is like simply coming out of the stack, the stack frames in which the frames are getting uh, allocated one by one. And then finally, when we are returning, means we are returning this means we are moving the control back to wherever it was called. Uh, if you want to know more about recursion, overview and all of that, we have covered that in the beginning of the recursion primer series. Uh, do check it out. The links are in the description below. So, that is it. So, this is the main goal that we are doing. We are printing it out, the unprocessed string one by one in every recursion call, in every base case of the recursion call. That is it. With that, now let us try to run this. So, as you can see, these are the substrings that are generated. So, as we can see that the order of the elements are in the reverse order like it is C, B, A instead of A, B, C. So, that is because we are adding the character at the beginning to the unprocessed string. So, we will just put it at the end instead of adding or maybe instead of appending at the beginning, we will do it like this unprocessed plus then the input dot caret. Yeah, so now we can see that it is in the correct order like we want it to be and the subsequences are getting printed one by one. So, this is about printing the subsequences like we discussed we are going to learn how can we instead of printing it we will store it in some data structure list like a list and then we are going to print how many subsequences got generated right. So, for that this is the method signature that we are using uh, in which the return type as we can see is of array list. So, small tweaks to the existing code we are going to do let us see what 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 we can do. So, now we are going to see the other implementation where instead of printing the subsequences, we are going to store that in an array list and then return the size of the array list, which is going to actually give us how many subsequences have occurred, like the count of subsequences. So, into this method, I will first copy this existing code only and then we are going to modify this. So, in this, as we can see, the return type is an array list of string. So, like if you can recall from the uh, recursion tree at the end we were circling the unprocessed strings okay so all that things which we are actually printing it out instead of printing we are going to store it so if we are talking of the lhs and the rhs this is the first line we were saying one is lhs second is the rhs so these things instead of writing it directly now we have to store it in a data structure which is an array list so we are going to just store it the return value of this recursive calls will be stored in one array list which is going to be called as let's say lhs and another array list which is going to be called as RHS. So, we are going to store these two array lists separately one for the left hand side and one for the right hand side and I will just quickly change the name of this method also. So, once we have these two lists ready the left hand side and the right hand side now we need to combine those or we need to merge those. So, in order to merge two lists we use LHS dot add all method. So, we are going to add LHS dot add all to RHS and then the combined list of LHS and RHS will be ready. Once that is ready, now we have both the uh, both the subsequences whatever we have collected so far, then we can return this. Now, coming to the base case. So, in here instead of printing we have to create a new array list. So, what we will do? Okay, now basically this base case is going to run when, when this method count subsequences is anywhere the recursive call that is happening again and again. At some point, this string input is going to be empty. So far, we are good. Now, when this string input is becoming as empty is when the time we need to return whatever has been stored in this unprocessed string, which is the subsequence. So, that instead of printing, we were printing it earlier. Now, we are not going to print it, we are going to store it. So, so, to this we are just going to add our unprocessed string and we will return this list. Now, when we are returning this list, where is this being returned to? It is being returned to this method only, which is the count subsequences. 
So that is why when we are returning output, output is an array list, array list is getting returned to this count subsequences and that is what we are storing once on the left hand side and second time on the right hand side, combining those and finally returning the combined answer. That's it. This is the only change which was needed. So with that, I will comment out these two lines in which we were calling this method and print this. So now the output is 8. As you can recall from the whiteboard, there were 8 subsequences including the empty string also, which we can discard. Uh, ideally, there are 7 subsequences. So if you want, we can also print this so that we can visualize how many subsequences have generated. So here is the output, we have 7 of them which is generated and including the empty string it is 8. So in this way we saw the two implementations related to subsequences of a string, one in which we are printing the subsequences and second in which we are counting the subsequences and returning that. So I hope uh, you guys have understand how can we use recursion to solve this particular problem and this is going to form a very good foundation of recursion as well as the subsequence problem. Using this we can solve many different problems, the different flavors of subsequences which is available over lead code and other platforms. So yeah, that's all for today. Do let us know in the comments below if you guys have any questions or doubts or you want to share any feedback on this video. If you have enjoyed the session so far, do hit the like button so that this can reach out to many more people. And if it does, it just gives us enough motivation to put out more such content. Also, if you are looking forward to more videos like this, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon next to the subscribe button to never miss an update on our upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.